Hi, I'm Laura. Welcome to my beginner yoga series where I will be taking you through some yoga poses from a beginner sequencing mindset. So if you're brand new to yoga, these will be perfect for you because I will talk about alignment and the benefits of each of these poses, how they will come up in a yoga practice if you're taking a full you know, hour long yoga practice. Um, so you'll have some familiarity with those poses. So that is my goal with this series. Um, I have a blanket underneath me. So a blanket or a towel is always a great um, prop to have if you have it. Um, I always have a block and a strap. The strap can be either um, a yoga strap if you happen to have one, a towel or a belt, anything at home to help deepen some of the poses that we'll, we will be getting into. So, so thank you for joining me and let's get started. Let's get started in child's pose. So child's pose, we learn a lot from our children. So this is a great restorative resting pose. A lot of yoga practices start in this position. And throughout your practice, if you're not having it, or you just need a little bit of a, a break, this is a great pose to come back to. So to, we're gonna get started first with a wide knee child's pose and we will change it up um, halfway through. So taking the knees wide, the toes together, we're gonna walk your hands out towards the top of your mat. I have the blanket underneath me for a little bit of padding. <laughs> Can have that, it doesn't, it's not necessary, but it kind of adds a little bit of more extra comfort with your knees and your ankles. And as you walk those hands towards the top of the mat, allow your chest to drop towards the mat. Now this may be too intense on your shoulders as you reach forward. Feel free to bend the elbows and drop the forearms. And your gaze is down and maybe the forehead comes all the way to the mat. Your chest presses towards the mat and your hips are dropping back towards your heels. Now your hips may not drop right back towards those heels. They may be higher up. That's all gonna be dictated by the the tightness of your hips. This is a great stretch for your hips and your low back. So being patient with ourselves here. So wherever you are with hips dropping towards your ankles, that is the ultimate goal over time. And that is a great way to notice how your hips are doing as, is, as they begin to stretch more, you will be getting closer to those ankles. So letting the forehead come towards the mat, and this is where maybe if you have a block, you can even have your forehead to the block to allow a little bit more of a, a relaxation of your head if it doesn't meet all the way down towards the mat. So this is a wonderful place to begin your practice if you're just doing a couple poses, if you're taking 15 minutes, maybe 30 minutes, maybe a full 60 minute class. It's a great way to begin to just let the mind settle, the breath start to slow, and to start to bring your awareness to your body, to your breath, and just start to notice anything you're feeling in your body sensations, tightness, restrictions. Mental awareness with our yoga practice is a big part of being mindful. And just starting to fill up the lungs and feel the opening through the back body. So in this pose, the front of the body softens, the back torso lengthens, and stretches. Child's pose is a wonderful pose for fatigue, stress, anxiety, anything you may be feeling in those areas. This is a great place to just drop into if you're feeling it just anytime throughout the day. If you're having a day, come here. All right, so this is our wide kneed child's pose. So let's Press up through the palms and come back up to seated. 
and then close the knees and we're going to keep those ankles together. Now we're going to come into a closed knee child's pose. So same idea with the knees closed, a little bit of a different stretch because you're going to feel a little bit more for the top of the legs. As you walk your arms forward, again, maybe coming all the way to the top, resting the chest on the thighs if you can. Again, you may not because of those hips, but just let the body tell you what it needs. It may be like, oh no, that's not happening for me today. Bend the elbows and just let those hands melt back slowly back towards the, the knees. Maybe stack the hands, forehead to hands, or again, use that block. And another option of the arms that you could do in the closed knee or the wide knee child's pose is take those hands back towards your feet. So hands to ankles, heels, or just resting beside your feet and drop in. So more of a curled up rounded positioning here with the closed knee. So let your body you know, tell you what you need and maybe change it up to a little bit of the closed knee, a little bit of the, the wider knee. Um, so like I said, great resting pose, great place to start your practice, very restorative, and maybe stay here for one to three minutes. Um, you know, several, several breaths of deep inhales and exhales, very meditative, very relaxing, and it's a great place, great place to start. So. All right, so let's get into some twisting. So twisting, there's so many different ways we could do twisting in yoga, but let's just keep it simple today and do a, um, some supine twisting. So coming onto our backs, rolling back down, all the way down, bringing the knees in towards your chest. So just a nice way to kind of begin with a little soft knees to chest. Great for the low back as you pull the knees in. Really good if you have an upset stomach too. So we're gonna have the knees in towards your chest and let's take the legs out straight to start. I have my blanket, but you don't really need your blanket at the moment here. So let's bring your right knee in towards your chest. Left hand on your knee, right arm off the side, pulling the knee over towards the left. Now here, not getting hung up on how far this knee goes, just to start to feel a nice rotation twist into the torso, nice stretch on the outer hip. That shoulder will get a nice stretch by having the arm off to the side. So this arm should not be too high up. It should be either shoulder height or lower. And just let that right palm rest um, shine up. The palm is shining up, back of the hand is resting on the ground. So lots of benefits of our twisting. So as you can see, as we rotate and opening through the rib cage here, stretches the muscles in the fascia, which is kind of like the webbing part of our musculature of our muscles, um, of, our, of our structure. Um, so, to help, so by stretching that, it helps release any tightness in our lungs, which in turn will help us breathe better. So again, softening here, letting that right shoulder soften and using a prop. Once again, I should have had you grab that block. If you have a block and want to rest the knee on the block, that could feel good or a stack of pillows or a stack of blankets. And just try to let the body settle in and fall in to this space here without forcing anything. So more restorative once again. Help to de-stress as we twist and almost feel like you're wringing out organs detoxifying, releasing toxins from our muscles, our tissues, inner tissue deep into those organs. Oh God, come back to center. Good, and then release the right leg down. So just release it down and then let's do the same thing onto the other side. So left knee in, 
left knee into chest. Good. Moving your, your prop to the opposite side if you're using it. Left arm off to the side, right hand to left knee, and slowly drag that knee over towards the right. So again, finding that degree of depth in of your twist. Left shoulder rest down. Maybe if it doesn't come all the way down, that's okay because it's stretching the front of the chest on the left side. Maybe you have this arm propped on some blankets or a pillow. So these twisting stretches, as I mentioned, are a great way to really compress the organs to help our bodies detoxify, release toxins. It also helps to release and cleanse out any stagnant emotions, thoughts, experiences. Just a great way to just clear the mind and body as you let the body settle here. Again, finding that depth of the knee. Maybe it's resting on a stack of towels, blankets, or block. And maybe this left arm is off shoulder height or lower, right arm can be off to the side as well, or take that right hand to the outside of the knee to help deepen into this left hip. Great way to stretch the outer hip, the torso, oblique muscles, shoulders and chest, a lot going on here. So again, this is a supine twist. So as you progress, along with different poses that I'll be showing you. We'll get a little bit into other twists that are deeper and a different variation. Some standing, some sitting. Good. And bringing the knee back to center. Pull both knees in towards your chest. A little rock side to side to massage out that low back. Maybe take those knees into a circle. Great way, like I mentioned, to get that low back. Maybe even deepen it by bringing knees into nose. Good. And then when you're ready, come to your side, push yourself up, and come back to your seated position. And that is our supine twisting. Moving on to bridge pose. So offering some variations with bridge pose, so make sure we have our block handy. So coming on to our backs. All right, so rolling all the way down, having the knees bent and feet, soles of the feet pressing into the mat, about hip distance apart. So finding those hip points and those knees should be about that distance apart. So first variation I'm gonna show you is using the block. If you have one, if you don't have a block, a stack of towels or a rolled up blanket works perfectly well. So taking that prop, place it at the base of your back. So at that bony part of your low back, right at the base of the spine, at the top of the glutes, that's your sacrum. So having a supported glute bridge here. So pressing the soles, the feet into the mat and finding this nice, gentle, restorative, uh, variation of glute bridge here. So choosing your height of where your hips are. So this allows the front of the body to open a bit. It will be a little bit deeper and more intense if you take that hip, the hips up higher, maybe to that middle range of the block or height of your pillow or blankets. So this, right as soon as those hips lift, the chest opens, shoulders drop. Palms can just drop beside you. So this is really great for our abdominal region and our thyroid, which will help in increase the circulation, improve metabolism as we are kind of suppressing this front area of our thyroid and the abdominal region is engaged. And settling in here, it's a great way to, it comes a lot of times at an end of a yoga practice, um, sometimes beginning a little bit of a warm up, but towards the end of a practice where we kind of start to wind down our sequencing and to come to the final part of practice. So 
just another way to be aware of how our yoga practice is sequenced. All right, so this is our variation with the block. So let's lift the hips gently, remove the block, move it off to the side. All right, so another variation here is without the block. So having those feet, once again, at hip distance. Palms this time placed down on the mat. Good. Press into the heels, into the feet, and lift the hips up. So again, feeling that compression here of just a slight compression of chin to chest, lifting the abdominals, so engaging the core. This is where the core is working a lot more here with the hips up because you're using the strength of those glutes and hamstrings to keep the hips lifted. Letting the chest open. So this is a really nice stretch for the front of the chest and even into the upper back. So variations with your hand placement. You can keep the palms pressing down or take the hands underneath you, interlace or grab the hands and try to inch those shoulder blades a little bit closer together. And keep those hips lifted. Here feeling a bit more intensity and in stretching into the back, into the hips, into those glutes, maybe even to the front of the legs, those quadricep muscles. A lot going on here. And using that breath, that's a strengthening and a stretching pose all in one. Okay, let's do one more breath like that. Good. Release the hands, place the palms down onto the mat. Take an inhale at the top of the bridge and then exhale lower the hips all the way down. Good. So one last variation that gets into a little bit more of the front of the thighs because we're kind of changing the degree of the knees um, being bent here. So walk those heels closer to the sit bones if you can. Your fingertips may even touch the back of the heels. If you can't get them that tight in, that's okay. Just a little bit more of a variation as we lift into these hips. So start with those palms down onto the ground. Inhale, press into those heels, lift the hips. Try to lift those hips one inch higher. Starting to feel a little bit of a difference with those heels moved closer in. Take those hands underneath if you choose. Scoot those shoulder blades closer together and lift those hips. Another variation and choosing any of these variations and maybe each day is different and holding these lifts maybe for six to eight breaths if you can, strengthening, stretching, getting into that low back here and the core and that whole abdominal region. Good, let's take one more breath here. Exhale. All right, last inhale. As you exhale, release the hands, lower the hips all the way down. Take a deep breath. Turn to your side, push yourself up, come back up, and that is our glute bridge lifts. Now moving on to a forward fold. We're going to do a standing forward fold. So using a block, if you choose, if you have tight hamstrings, this is a great stretch for those hamstrings. So if you would like to use the block, highest height, medium height, low height, or maybe you don't need it at all. So just an option here. So having that block, top of mat, standing up nice and tall, feet about hip distance apart. Inhale, bring those arms up overhead. Exhale, forward fold. So you'll hear this a lot in a yoga class. So if you're using that block, let those hands come to the block, trying to let the back round, slight bend into these knees. This is really a wonderful way to calm the body, calm the mind, cools the body. And let, maybe even grabbing onto opposite elbows if that feels good. But answering those um, hamstrings if they are speaking to you by bending into the knees. 
and just allowing, thinking of more letting the belly drop towards your thighs versus reaching the head down. So kind of just more of a bend, a fold, which is where the name comes from, forward folding. So we're folding in and letting gravity help us to reach the crown of the head down as the chest comes towards your thighs. So as we're in this fold, you can see how it's compressing once again our internal organs. So very good once again for digestion, very good for calming the body and mind. Really good for insomnia, anxiety, dep mild depression. I've even read that it can be good for menopause sy symptoms. So just a really way, great way, maybe hands come down to the ground. To just let the body kind of come to a relaxation pose here, so to speak. Here it's somewhat active, obviously, as you're holding ourselves up, but it can be still a calming pose. So maybe staying here for six to eight breaths. This is another great um, pose for headaches. I know it sounds like it wouldn't be a good headache thing, but it definitely gets the blood circulating more towards the brain, gets the body open, the mind calm, gets those the blood flow going. To come out of this, we're gonna bring our hands to hips and we're slowly gonna hinge up, letting the chest come up slowly, hinging, pressing into those feet, coming all the way back up to standing, coming back up to Tadasana. So Tadasana is another name for mountain pose, which is another way that we, we start a lot of our practice, um, our practices, our poses and our sequencing. So coming back to standing Tadasana. Okay, so coming into a one-legged Tadasana. So as we have done in other, uh, the other video, we did a, our Tadasana, which is our standing mountain pose. So now coming into one-legged of that. So working with our balance now. So I'm going to mirror you. So let's bring hands to hips. Let's ground into your right foot. Lift the left heel. So the left toes pressing into the mat. And we're going to take our eyes to something that is not moving. Feel free to use a wall or a counter or something you can kind of hold on to and maybe play around with it to pull the hand away at times to try to build that strength and balance into one leg at a time. So working on that strength of the right leg, slowly lift left knee. So hopefully the goal eventually will be to get this thigh parallel to the ground. If it's lower, that's okay. It may be a hip issue, it could be a, just more of a balance issue, and that's okay. That's why we do these things. We're trying to get better. All right, so again, so if you have that hand on the wall, maybe fingertip it, so very lightly, maybe try to pull it away. So this is such a great strengthener into that standing leg. The right leg now is working really hard to keep us standing steady. A slight bend into the knee. What a great ankle and foot strengthener too, because a lot of stability going on with those bell, the feet to keep us grounded. And hold this for about eight-ish breaths. If you can, maybe 10 full breaths, right? That's a breath, that's one. We tend to breathe too fast when we want to get it over with, right? Those aren't real breaths. That's like hyper hyperventilating. We learn how to breathe in yoga. All right, and let's lower the left leg down and shake it out. So holding that, playing around with it, like I said, 10-ish breaths or so. Let's move to the other side. So grounding into the left foot this time, hands to the hips, coming on to the tiptoes of the right foot. Right heel lifts and try to find something that is not moving. If you need to move your eyes away from the, the, from the video, just listening to my voice, I will cue you. So slowly lift the right knee up, hopefully having that thigh parallel to the ground if you can or wherever you can have that balance in that left leg. Now the left leg's working, making sure shoulders are stacked over hips. Fingertip that wall if you need to with that right hand. Good. Just really feeling the strength of that standing leg. 
using our breath. And this nice thing with when we do one-legged poses, we start to bring awareness to our body of what leg is stronger, what leg is tighter, what leg maybe is a little bit more resistant to this, all the pressure on it. So good way to bring awareness to our body is when we do these one-sided poses. All right, and then when you're heading up, lower the leg down and shake it out. Okay, finding chair pose. So I will turn to the side so you can see. If you keep facing forward, I will turn so you can see my um, posture here. So feet are about hip distance apart. So those hip points, feet are right underneath your hips. Let's take the hands to hips to start. We're gonna sink back into the hips like you're looking for a chair. So sink the butt back and find that weight shift a little bit into those heels, but still try to find a balance with the four corners of our feet. So thinking the big toe mound, baby toe mound, and each side of the heel, there's four points. So if you could picture that, they're all equally pressing into the, the mat. I like to say if you were wearing roller skates, there would be equal weight on every wheel of that roller skate, of each four wheel, of each of the four wheels. All right, so hands placements, totally optional. Hands can be the hips, we're already working the thighs, right? Feeling the thighs, we already know what this pose is working. Thighs, hips, but calves, Achilles tendon, which is down here, my thigh coming into the foot, um, back of the legs, um, hands to hips or hands to heart center, or if you want to get into the shoulders and back strengthening, we'll reach those arms up overhead. So reaching those arms, so here we're stretching into the shoulders, the back, the low back, reaching for the fingertips, and instead of having this arch in the back, we want to kind of tilt that tailbone so it's facing down towards the ground to find that flat back. So reaching, extending, and trying to sink back a little deeper to work those legs a little bit more. So this is a really, really good strengthening for those quadriceps and strengthening into the back and shoulders. Really good for, once again, for those internal organs. They're working, the core is working. Good, and maybe holding this for five, eight breaths or so. Good, hands come back to hips, press into those feet, straighten into the legs, and shake it out. Maybe feeling a little bit of a burn into the legs, but that's good. Building strength, awesome. All right, coming into a low yogi squat. It's also called malasana. I think of it as a baseball catcher pose. So um, using a block as an option and maybe just kind of playing around with how deep we're gonna go and being patient with ourselves because we may not go as low as you will eventually as you work at this. So we'll start standing and we're gonna take the feet wide. So wider than hip distance, turning the toes out. And having your prop handy, hands at hips. We're gonna slowly bend into the knees. Knees are gonna track over the toes, sinking down and you may only get here. You may be like, whoa, yeah, feeling those hips inner thighs, groin, huge stretch in that area, back, right, because the back is getting strengthened by staying upright, shoulders stacked over hips. Good, and if you want to go deeper, bring those hands to heart center and start to sink down into this squat. So this is where this block is gonna come handy, come in handy, bringing the butt to that block. So trying not to like plop into the block, still lifting up and out of this heart center. Yep, and then this is a huge hip opener. Hip and inner thigh, groin opener here. The elbows pressing to the inner thighs to open them a bit more. Keep that chest lifted. Feel that back start to stretch. It's a wonderful stretch. You feel really good. Definitely more of an active stretch here. And if you don't want that block and you're feeling good because you've been doing this for a while, you can sink into it. I feel this every single time that I do it. And to come out of it, place the hands on the ground, push the ground away, straighten the legs, heel, toe those feet closer in, hands to hips, slight bend in the knees, slowly come up to stand. Shake it out. 
Okay, coming to our low lunge position. So I have my blanket on my mat because we'll be on our knee for this. So I will turn to the side. You can stay facing forward. We're gonna bring your right foot forward. So now, right foot forward. Um, this left hip flexor is gonna get the stretch here. So, in your right outer hip. So depending on where that tightness is, it will dictate how much we can lean forward and bend into this knee. So let that be your determining factor. You may have to slide your left knee back if you want a little bit more of a stretch. And then addressing the toes here. So the toes may not be able to be flattened onto the mat. Maybe they're curled under. Either way, you're getting a nice stretch with the feet. I'm big in stretching the feet, toes, ankles. We tend to forget about our feet and we tend to lose uh, mobility over time and we don't bend at the ankle and we shuffle and we trip and we fall and we have lots bigger issues. So you decide what feels best and they may, neither of them may feel good. So whatever's better, um, because it's whatever way you're doing, you're gonna get a nice stretch either into the toes and the bottom of the foot or the top of the foot and the ankle. Hands to that right thigh, press the thigh away, lift the chest, pull those shoulders back. So a nice stretch into the left hip flexor, the low back, shoulders and upper back. And just breathe into this. Trying to settle into this and trying to not be so tense and tight and like, okay, yep, I'm doing it. Trying to just find that place where you can soften. It's not always easy, but it gets easier as we do this more. So maybe holding for five to eight breaths, let those shoulders drop. Maybe even finding your eyes close as you soften a little bit more into this pose. If you wanna deepen it, if you wanna get the shoulders involved, the arms can come up overhead. So reaching through those fingertips, now we're getting shoulders and back involved, even longer through the left side of the body here. And if you wanna go even further, start to bend over to the right. So feeling that left side of the body open, stretch and lengthen. So lots of different levels here in this low lunge. Bring the hands back to your thigh, push into the left leg and then pull that right knee back. We'll just shake it out, shift it side to side. All right, so let's come to the other side. So that was stretching the left hip flexor big time and right outer hip. Let's bring the left foot forward. So here we're gonna stretch the outer left hip and the front right hip flexor and take that right knee further back if you would like a little bit of a deeper stretch. Untuck toes or curl toes or maybe a little bit of both. Bring those hands to thigh. Lift the chest, pull the shoulders back, and feel maybe any differences that you feel from one side from the other. Again, using one leg at a time in this pose, finding maybe one hip is tighter, maybe one side's a little bit more wobblier. It's okay, we all have imbalances, and it's just nice to be aware of those imbalances so we can work towards trying to find a little bit more of a balance between them and bring it closer together so they're more similar than they are different. Good, and then again, hands that can move to hips or they can come up overhead for that deepening and lengthening through the shoulders and back and then start to tilt over to the left. Now thinking of fingertips over shoulders, shoulders over hips. We don't wanna to be too far forward and rounded it's getting into a completely different stretch, reaching over to the left. So now lengthening through that right side of the body, all the way down to that right hip flexor, all the way down to the front of that right thigh. Come back up to center, release hands down, bring that foot back and shake it out. And that is your low lunge. Okay, so seated forward fold. We did the standing forward, forward fold, now we're gonna do it seated. And if you'd like to use a strap, feel free to grab your strap and have it handy. 
And again, I have a couple options with your blanket. Um, so why don't we start with the blanket and maybe take it so it's a little bit more, allow you to prop up a bit when sitting on the blanket. You could also use a block actually for this to raise up the hips to get a little bit more of a fold. So depending on how tight your hamstrings are, the seated forward fold is really big to get into those hamstrings, back of the body. So this is an option here. So what you wanna do is sit up nice and tall, shoulders over the hips. I'm thinking of hinging forward versus folding forward, rounding forward, because that gets into a completely different group of muscles. So having the knees bent, definitely recommended. And let's just start without the strap for now. Have the arms resting by your side with this block or rolled up blanket or towel. Start to hinge forward. As you hinge forward, start to feel glutes, hamstrings, low back kick in. Start to walk forward. Extend and release and find that stretch. You wanna grab the strap here. Yep, and then maybe straightening into the legs a bit more. This will get deeper into the glutes and hamstrings here. So seated figure four, so, so good to work the back of the body. Calming the mind once you can kind of settle into the space. And this cools the body, calms the mind. And this really brings, really, it's great to really activate that circulation into your pelvic region, which in turn stimulates the reproductive organs, the urinary systems. And so everything here is kind of getting activated in addition to a nice stretch along the back of the body. I'm gonna show you a different variation of this. So let's come back up. So when you're in that, again, six to eight breaths, and maybe do it a couple times, come out of it, come off the block. So we're gonna do the same thing and feel a difference when you do it this way, coming off the block. So taking the strap to start on the feet. And like I said, you don't have to use a strap. It can just be a, a fold here. All right, so sitting up nice and tall, start to hinge forward, bend the knees if you need to. Yep, and then you wrap those straps and let the chest, thinking of bringing the chest to the thigh and reaching forward with the collarbones. So as you reach forward the collarbones, as you bend into the knees, you may even feel a bit of a stretch into your calf muscles. The whole back of the body. Breathing. And try to just soften as much as you can. A lot of these stretches are an ease and an effort. You may hear me say that often, you're finding the effort first, and once you get there, try to ease into it. It's a great way to stimulate the internal organs, calming our nervous system. All right, and then come out of it, and then one other variations. So I talked about keeping the back straight and kind of hinging forward. We're going to do more of what we do when we did the forward fold standing. We're going to round and kind of really drop into it a little bit more. All right, so let's start up nice and tall. Start to reach forward, maybe walk those hands forward. And when you can't go any further, let the shoulders round, head, neck, chest drops, maybe grabbing onto the outside of the feet, the shins, the calves, the knees, feeling more of a stretch now here, moving up your back. So middle to upper back, we'll get this stretch. So finding some different variations, using it in a different way, folding, like I said, is really good for these internal organs because again, you're kind of crunching them and compressing them to kind of really activate get them activated and just 
with the upper back being straight or rounded, you're working a different, different, you're working this posture in a different way, and that's okay. So just kind of get into, feel into this posture, what feels good for you. And just breathe and be in the moment. And that is our seated forward fold. All right, so seated figure four. Uh, we can do this lying down on our backs, but today I'm gonna to show you how to do it seated. So again, using your blanket if you like it there. If not, that's okay too. All right, so seated figure four. We're gonna have your feet a little bit further away towards the top of the mat. Let's start with the left side. So you're gonna bring your left ankle and cross it over the right. So now here, what I like about it doing, um, doing this pose in a seated position, you can adjust how deep you wanna go into the hip. So your left hip is working here. So if you feel like this is good, I mean, you may even have, you can start here. Like, okay, this is enough, figure four. So here's your four. You may be like, yep, this is good. All right or come to the sole of the foot and find the distance of where you would like the depth to go. So the heel further away from your sit bone is gonna be a lesser of a stretch. As you move that heel closer to your sit bone, the deeper you're gonna get into this outer hip. Pressing into the palms, lifting the chest, a really great stretch for that hip, but also your glute, your, your glute muscle, your butt, uh, your piriformis. So the piriformis is a deep muscle that connects to from your sacrum, that bony part of your low back, to the top of your femur bone, which is your thigh bone. Now I'm a bit of a, an anatomy geek. I love the body, I love the muscles, I love the structure, I love what the muscles do. If I was um, 30 years younger, I would be a physical therapist, but that's not in the cards right now because I would be in school for like forever. Anyway, I digress. Let's get back to the body here. So the hip um, and piriformis, I'm sorry, I was on the piriformis, but piriformis muscle attaches from the sacrum to, you keep stretching while I talk, um, attaches to the top of the fe uh, femur and thigh bone and the sciatic nerve runs through it. So when this, so here's a sciatic nerve, runs through the piriformis. When this piriformis gets inflamed, tense, tight, it squeezes that sciatic nerve, causing numbness, pain, tingling, all the way down the back of the leg, sometimes even to the foot. So what we need to do is stretch the piriformis muscle. And by doing that, this is one of the best stretches to do that, there's others that I will eventually get to, but this is one of the best ones. So if you suffer from that on one or both legs, I would definitely re recommend this stretch. All right, so taking that foot off that knee, and we're gonna go to the other side. So now, again, straightening the left leg, let's start with that right ankle right above left knee, and judging, see now my right hip is a lot tighter than my left. So this is where it's not gonna work near as well as that first side. And you may find the same thing, that one side is tighter than the other. So maybe starting here, maybe bending the left knee and then finding that depth, walking that heel closer to your sit bone. Yeah, and then trying to pull and pull that right knee off to the side. And sometimes it's a structural thing that you may find over time that one side's so much tighter and it's like, I don't know what's going on with my hip or it could be muscular. And that's something that um, if you were to be evaluated, they'd be able to determine that. But in the meantime, all we can do is our best to stretch our muscles and try to find a little bit more balance and release and lengthen. All right and then walking that foot forward, uncrossing the leg, coming out of it, and that is seated figure four. Thank you so much for joining me with my beginner yoga series that today we focused mainly on the low back and hips. Of course, we got into some of the other areas of the body that are sometimes hard to miss when we're working some of these different poses. So 
Um, if you have any comments or questions, please reach out. I'd love to hear from you and I will see you again soon.